Hey, in this video I'm going to step you through the basic setup uh, steps I take when I uh, use 1140 and Genesis Framework. So the first thing I like to do is change the password and that's under Users and Profile. Just scroll down to the bottom and here we go. Input a new password and update that. Next is layout. With the Genesis framework you'll get your own uh, set of menu options for Genesis. For layout you go to the theme settings and we can do a number of things here. Uh, with 1140 you get a number of options, color options. I like blue. Layout. This is the layout I use for pretty much every page for my display ads. So the contents on the left, sidebars on the right. I don't enable breadcrumbs. I take off trackbacks. Comments I'll leave on. And all that I pretty much leave as is. You can put your analytics code in this section here for Google for tracking. And that's all I do for the layout. Next up I change the permalinks. And the reason I do that is uh, by default WordPress will assign you know, some numbered type URL for your posts and articles and so forth. I like going with the post name. Just leave it as that. And save changes. Now 1140 offers uh, one feature you don't see on a lot of sites. They have what they call a tagline at the top and this shows up on every page. Now, for my display ad sites, I take this out of here and I'll show you how to do that. For uh, like a blog like uh, Fat Stacks, you'll notice I kept it in there. I may move, I rem may remove it, but uh, really for display ads, what this is all about, you know, that I I don't want it in there at all. It's distracting. It doesn't serve a purpose. So to get rid of that, we just go to the general and just delete that. So if you want to put it in here, write whatever you want there, and if you don't want it, just take it out. And then site title. You want to input your site title, whatever that may be, there, and don't forget to save changes. Next up, you probably want to add a logo. So, it's fairly simple. Just go to Appearance and Header. For this particular theme, and it's a good thing, it's one of the reasons I use it, and check out the next video for all the reasons why this is such a great theme for display ads, but it has a very small logo area. It's only 320 wide and only 65 pixels in height. It's very, very small and you'll see that it just goes right there all right so you got to customize your logo to fit that you'll just choose a file upload it and then you just install it and save your changes I, I'm I didn't create one for this particular site so but that's all you do there for the logo now in terms of the uh, plugins I use for my display ad sites I'll uh, show you all of those I'll spare you watching me install them all so I'll go through each one and just briefly give you a rundown, whether it's required or optional or whatnot. Ad Rotate is a paid plugin, so you got to buy it. Uh, I use it to rotate ads. It's not necessary for um, display ads. I don't even put my display ads in there. I actually rotate videos on the site, so I I wouldn't start off buying that. I'd keep your costs as low as possible. Akismic comes loaded with it. Uh, it's a common spam thing. I use it. Uh, short code in text widgets. If you're going to end up using any short codes in any of your widget zones, you'll want to install that. Now, here is uh, Amazon S3 CloudFront and Web Services. I host all my images on my um, really high volume blogs. They have a lot of images. I, I host them in Amazon S3 buckets and on the CloudFront. And I like to upload images through my dashboard. And so I've installed and configured these two plugins together. They work together so that I can upload images through WordPress and they actually get installed in the bucket on Amazon server. And it saved me a lot of time because otherwise I was doing it manually. And uh, so if you're going to go that route with your images on Amazon S3, which I recommend, if you're going to have lots of traffic, then check out these. Contact Form 7 just creates a contact form. It's free. Elf Links, this is a... Um, uh, a linking software uh, used to basically hide links on a page uh, that they're 
yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You can check them out. I, I use them on some sites. I don't use them on every site. Uh, these are great uh, plugins. Oh, by the way, Elflinks is a paid uh, software too. So uh, Genesis uh, offers some great uh, free plugins. And Simple Edits creates a simple footer, which I use. Simple Hooks creates a lot of areas where you can input different content throughout your blog. And Simple Sidebars, really great plugin, allows you to create customized sidebars. So you can create different sidebars and, and use them on different pages and posts and input different content in there. Uh, site map, map uh, lazy load, uh, also free. Uh, if you're going to use a lot of images like I do, you definitely want this. It'll save you a lot of money on your Amazon server costs because what it does is it loads images as a visitor scrolls. And so if they leave the page halfway down, then you're only paying for data transfer of the images that were actually shown or displayed, not everyone on a page. Q2W3Fix, brilliant. Uh, plugin it's free it actually creates what's called a sticky or fixed or floating zone in your sidebar and so when somebody's scrolling down your page what they'll do is they'll see that sticky zone will stick with the visitor as they go down it's really great for uh, using uh, display ads in there don't put adsense in there though adsense will not permit that it's against their tos do not put adsense in a sticky or fixed zone anywhere unless they give you an exception but i don't think they'll do that for you. Uh, quick AdSense. This is the AdSense plugin I use for uh, placing ad zones throughout the site. Uh, it's great. It's free. It works really, really well. Shareaholic for sharing buttons. I, I quite like that one. It's free. Simple Social Icons. This is uh, through StudioPress as well. It's free. It just creates uh, little little Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest uh, buttons up in your sidebar for you know people can visit those pages. Sumo Me, a brilliant plugin. Recommend it. It's free. You got to pay ten bucks to get rid of their uh, logo on it. But what it does is it creates uh, image sharing uh, options. So like when someone hovers over an image on your website, they will see a Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter icon show up over the image. It's small, so it doesn't like cover the whole image. And then you're going to get your images shared. So if you're creating an image-rich uh, website or even using a few, use it. It's great. Lots of shares. Uh, table press, definitely optional, only if you're building tables like you know grids and charts and so forth. I always like TinyMC Advance. I know it's a bit of a resource hog, but I like the additional features it gives me for formatting text and my posts and so forth. Uh, W3 Total Cache. This is a caching plugin that uh, Synthesis Hosting requires, so that's what I use. WP Show Hide. That basically allows you to um, sh uh, hide uh, text and uh, opens with a with the link. So, like, if you wanted to have like a big reference section or something like that, you just click the link and then it'll show all the rest of the content. Uh, robot.txt, if you're going to create one of those for your site, you can put in the plugin there. And w uh, sh show IDs. i got to get rid of that. I just install that. Once in a while, I need to know the ID number for a poster page, and so I install that. So I should deactivate that. So that's what I use. It's a little bit widget uh, plugin heavy. It's recommended no more than 20. I went a little over. But those are the plugins I use for my site. And that pretty much covers up my basic uh, website setup for uh, 11, 1140. Of course, then there's content and placing your ads and all the rest of it.